is the star Betelgeuse about to go supernova? Well, if we see it with our naked eye, that means it's going to be too close to us. And that would be devastating, of course, for our solar system, let alone only our planet. A supernova so close would be quite spectacular. This is by uh, an image by ESO. One of the brightest stars in the night sky is exhibiting signs that its explosive demise might not be far away. The red supergiant, which can be found in the constellation Orion, has been going through periods of dimming and brightening for thousands of years. However, a particularly notable and recent period of low intensity has been piquing the interest of astronomers who have speculated that it could be an indication that this star is about to explode into a supernova. Such an event, when it does happen, could make Betelgeuse appear so bright in the sky that it would be like a second sun, even though it would be for a period of only a few weeks. Situated around 700 light years away, the star has long been expected to go supernova at some point, but there is much uncertainty over exactly how long it will be before this happens. Even if the recent reduction in intensity is an indication of this, it could still take thousands of years. The astronomer Yvette Sendis of Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics says, stars in the later phases of their life go through a lot of variability that we can't fully explain yet. It probably still has tens of thousands of years, if not 100,000 years left. One astrophysicist, Matthew Buckley of Rutgers University, has even made the tongue-in-cheek suggestion that the dimming could be due to the construction of a Dyson fear. He said, Weird how everyone is wondering if Betelgeuse dimming means it's going supernova, sadly unlikely, but no one is asking the real question. Is its dimming a sign that someone is finishing a Dyson sphere around it? The concept of a Dyson sphere was originally proposed over 50 years ago by physicist Freeman Dyson, who suggested the possibility that a sufficiently advanced extraterrestrial race may be able to surround a star with a huge spherical structure and then live on the inside of that sphere. Sufficient to say, this is unlikely to be the extreme that this is what's happening with the, the star at Betelgeuse. This is on CNET, Unexplained Mysteries on Out of Mind. But what is a supernova according to NASA? A supernova is the explosion of a star and it's the largest explosion that takes place in space. Where do supernovas take place? They're often seen in galaxies, in other galaxies, of course, but supernovas are difficult to see in our own Milky Way because dust blocks our view. In 1604, Johann Kepler discovered the last observed supernova in the Milky Way. NASA's Chandra telescope discovered the remains of a more recent supernova. It exploded in the Milky Way more than 100 years ago. Now, what causes a supernova? A supernova happens when there's a change in the core or center of a star. A change can occur in two different ways, with both resulting in a supernova. The first type of supernova happens in binary star systems. Binary stars are two stars that orbit the same point. One of the stars, a carbon-oxygen white dwarf, steals matter from its companion star. And eventually, the white dwarf accumulates so much matter Having too much matter causes the star to explode, resulting in a supernova. The second type of supernova occurs at the end of a single star's lifetime. As the star runs out of nuclear fuel, some of its mass flows into its core. And eventually the core is so heavy that it cannot withstand its own gravitational force. The core collapses, which results in the giant explosion of a supernova. The sun is a single star but it does not have enough mass to become a supernova. Why do scientists study these supernovas? A supernova burns for only a short period of time, but it can tell scientists a lot about the universe. One kind of supernova has shown scientists that we live in an expanding universe, one that is growing at an ever-increasing rate. Scientists also have determined that supernovas play a key role in distributing elements throughout the universe. And when a star explodes, it shoots elements and debris into space. Many of these elements we find here on Earth are made in the core of stars, and these elements travel to form new stars, planets, and everything else in the universe. 
How do NASA scientists look for supernovas? They use different types of telescopes to look for and study them. Some telescopes are used to observe the visible light from the explosion. Others record data from the X-rays and the gamma rays that are also produced. Both NASA's Hubble Space Telescope and Shanta X-ray Observatory have captured images of such supernovas. In June 2012, NASA launched the first orbiting telescope that focuses light in the high energy region of the electromagnetic spectrum. The New STAR mission has a number of jobs to do. It will look for collapsed stars and black holes, and it also will search for the remains of supernovas. Scientists hope to learn more about how stars explode and the elements that are created by them. Now, how can you help? What can you do to help? You don't have to be a scientist or even have a telescope to hunt for supernovas. For example, in 2008, a teenager discovered a supernova. Then in January 2011, a 10-year-old girl from Canada discovered a supernova while looking at night sky images on her computer. The images taken by an amateur astronomer just happened to include a supernova. And with some practice and the right equipment, you could find the next supernova. This is according to NASA, and I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece. In Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.